from last year. I was right then and now. In 49 BC, Caesar crossed the Rubicon. He hadn't hesitated. He had temporized before crossing. In Rome, those who opposed Caesar were dreading what he was going to choose to do. They were willing to let him have everything he had if he left Rome. But Caesar wanted Rome. By waiting, Caesar's enemies were able to think about what would happen. They lost their nerve, and the rest is history. The world faces a similar moment today. A weak and self-doubting West have looked at jihadism and, just like impotent Islamic leaders, have panicked. Some are saying that migration needs to be closed. Some are saying that laws must be passed limiting Islam and worship. Ninety years ago, Ataturk hoodwinked Islamic scholars and got Turkish women to give up their head coverings. It was a rearguard action and made a long-term change, but that has sadly failed recently. For the West, the issue is easier to face, although it has not been widely recognized yet. The key is law and order. The meekness of modern police is astonishing to those who knew the world before the 60s. The Soviet Union exploited the peace movement as a way to secure reach within the West. And political correctness has been the brainchild of the peace movement, corroding institutions and emasculating police forces around the world, so that a celebrity who is the wrong color can kill a woman the wrong color and get away with it so that a pedophile celebrity can become fabulously wealthy and highly lauded, so that a thief can resist arrest and be compensated, so that a president can openly demean the U.S. public and be re-elected. Note, names don't have to be used here because there are numerous examples of each, but part of the cure of the fear of terrorism, the way to address it, is to give police and the courts the latitude to do their jobs. To not have killers walking the streets because they can't kill their victims again. It means border security like that Mr. Abbott desired. It means security laws like that Mr. Abbott was trying to pass. It means freedom of speech like Mr. Abbott had promised. Nothing need change for the West to be free of jihadism. Jail criminals, police effectively, have free and fair press. Strong border protection, effective intelligence agencies, strengthen cultural assets. One footnote, a free and fair press does not mean a partisan press. Partisan left-wing media have been complicit in promoting a narrative that has corroded cultural assets and prompted hysterical jihadism. People have died from lies spread by media regarding so-called insults to Islam or military activity that hasn't occurred. Case in point being the jailing of Peter Gresta, who, while adhering to international standards, is still guilty of promoting jihadism. Journalist standards have to rise for press to be free and fair. We must cross the river. For some, at the moment, the sex party has more credibility. My name is David Daniel Ball, and I'm the conservative voice. David Daniel Ball is author of History of the World in a Year by the Conservative Voice.